Hi everyone, this is Ari Witten and welcome back to the Energy Blueprint Podcast. Today I have with me Miriam Hanain, who has been dubbed the, Ener the Aaron Brockovich of the B World. She's an investigative journalist, activist, functional medicine coach, filmmaker, and entrepreneur. She's also the director of the documentary Vanishing of the Bees, which is narrated by Ellen Page. And today we have in store a very, very interesting conversation covering a pretty broad range of topics uh, from autoimmune disease to uh, Bayer and Monsanto and the recent merger to CBD oil. And we're gonna get into a whole bunch of things and I think this is gonna turn out to be a very interesting conversation. So uh, without any further ado, welcome Miriam. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Ari. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So I would love if, to get started by just asking you to, to talk a bit about your story and how you became interested in health and, and how that also translated into an interest and a passion for, for bees. I would say that um, upon arriving to Los Angeles from Montreal, shortly thereafter, I was in a crosswalk and I was hit by a Ford Explorer at 30 miles an hour and dragged across the cement and um, had a rude awakening to Western medicine, having come from Canada where it's like air, you know, social system, we, we grew up with healthcare. And so having broken several bones, including my left femur, where I had a, a 14 inch metal rod put in my leg and was not even given physiotherapy. So my body kind of exploded after that because of PTSD, although they did not tell me that my body would be in fight or flight. And so that everything that happened thereafter I kind of used it as an initiation to empower myself and then you know that's what i would do on in my spare time kind of studying and nutrition so later on had candida and later on found out that i was allergic to gluten and um had an ovarian uh, a grapefruit side cyst that i had to remove so one thing after insomnia one thing after the other and then i also fought to remove this 14 inch metal rod which you don't usually do that was in the, the left femur bone. Um, so, so then after that, having a near-death experience, I really was firm on wanting to give back and do something that's greater than me. I was at the time freelancing for Hollywood Reporter, Penthouse, my beats were sex and, and Hollywood and a little bit of spirit, spirituality. So, I then produced a, a piece on the Exxon Valdez oil spill and then decided I wanted to do my own project. And then sh shortly thereafter, the bees literally and figuratively flew into my life and uh, have stuck. Um, so so let's, let's go into the health aspect of things a little deeper. Um, yeah. So you had an autoimmune disease, is that correct? What, what autoimmune disease did you have? So let, I want to just put it in context that after making the film, I was ironically at an environmental film festival in the Dominican Republic, and I thought they were using a leaf blower, and I went to tell them to shut up, <laughs> turn it off, and they were in between two buildings, and they were fumigating. So shortly thereafter, I was diagnosed with lupus and fibromyalgia. So, so you, you were exposed to those pesticides, or I don't know, were the, was it pesticides, herbicides? I think it was a fumigant because they were trying to get rid of mosquitoes, um, but if, I, I could never confirm what it was. They didn't even know why I was yelling and so alarmed because the guy turned around and he was wearing a mask and no other protection and it was windy and I breathed in a whole bunch of chemicals and I went to see my doctor and a rheumatologist thinking it was my thyroid because I lost all strength and I, I'm pretty physical active person. And uh, when I also told them, could it be chemical body burden, they gave me a blank stare and did not know what I was talking about and gave me prednisone and, uh, and, and, and SSRI and just told me my body was attacking itself. See you later. Mm, wow. So you then had kind of a journey into exploring the whole health realm and, and, and really researching things and, and figuring out ways to improve your own health and treat your auto, autoimmune disease that 
uh, obviously was not being treated very well by your doctors. So, so what, what was that all about? What was that journey like and, and what did you discover? Well, yeah, I was very determined to reverse it. I think at first I didn't even think I could reverse it because when you're, you're telling a human being your body's attacking itself. And when you realize that we are run by our subconscious 95%, so a belief like that is so um, negative and has such an impact. So first realizing that I could reverse myself, um, there's a practitioner, a Corey, who I forget her right, last name right now, that reversed her autoimmune so put it planting the seed and it took six years and I was doing everything under the sun my ANA levels were at 640 and I think the range is between 0 to 40 0 to 60 I'm not sure so despite everything I really think it was a, a variety of things together and in my case because I did have chemicals um, coffee enemas were very very Part, very much part of um, a component of detoxing. I also had Epstein Barr and also discovered along my journey that many people who have EBV, as you know, having EBV, that it can, having been exposed, that it, it can turn into an autoimmune, it can hide in the organs. So I also was introduced to medical medium and tried a variety of things. I also took a a metabolomics test that we offer on honey colony which we have about 5,000 metabolites and um, you can identify what's deficient in the Krebs cycle what's not happening in the ATP production of energy and really pinpoint the deficiencies and also having studied metabolomics I learned to look at disease to kind of distill it in a very simple manner that one we are either being exposed to so many chemicals whether it's in a food or environment and the body doesn't have the ability to heal because it's it's um, there's more negative coming at you uh, and two that the body is not able to absorb the nutrients either because you have um, bad diet a crap diet or because there's malabsorption of some sort and you're not being able to absorb the proper nutrients because the body does want to heal and the body is amazing and we have to to help it along as you know mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so uh were you successful in getting your health back yes after six years i am taking this metabolomics test and doing a variety of things that include cbd silver molecular hydrogen um, just an array of things that I was able to bring them back to normal. I still have multiple chemical sensitivity. And so I joke that I've become an environmental indicator like the honeybees. <laughs> and, uh, but in, in, in reality, it's true. I have also been exposed in my upbringing to, like many of us, antibiotics. Uh, like can given like candy and also mold and now that I'm a, a functional medicine coach and I work with others and as an investigative journalist look at connecting the dots as I'm sure you do too you see these patterns over and over again it's very common for the for the person to have their gut obliterated due to antibiotics or been exposed to mold or exposed to some type of, of uh, toxin and so also in 2018 really excited about the cutting edge information that's that's exploring the gut brain access and just to it all starts in the gut and some of these antibiotics will kill these beneficial strains forever um, it's hard to get them back and we see with people who have autoimmune that they oftentimes don't have a good blend of positive uh, bacteria so i think all that to say that I am um, sensitive, but given it's like, oh, you're 45, you've been hit by a Ford Explorer and dragged 50 feet, you've been exposed to chemicals not once, but three times in Central or South America, and you've reversed your autoimmune. So I would like to stand to inspire others as to what is possible when they take health into their own hands. Um, yeah, absolutely. Beautifully said. So how did that then translate into an interest in bees 
Where do bees come into into the, the bees happened after the near death experience and um, George Langworthy, who's the co-director on the film, and I became friends and decided that we wanted to collaborate. And he told me that he thought that this would make um, a good documentary. So I spent a half an hour one afternoon, and I was really taken by the fact that the bees are a sacred, uh, a female society. They represent the sacred feminine, and with colony collapse disorder, you see that the bees will abandon the babies and the queen in a very short amount of time. And I saw that as a direct parallel to us abandoning Mother Earth. And I really like the fact that they work for the greater good. Um, as a sister, someone who loves women, who wants to support women, it just resonated with me. And, and literally a couple days later, the bees flew into my life and, and I've had these magical run-ins with, with bees uh, like driving down La Cienega um, which is a busy street in in Los Angeles and coming across a swarm next to the Beverly Center just one thing after the other and just I, I'm so honored to be in service and to be able to share the message and I, I, I kid that all roads can lead to bee and I can connect it all to the honeybees because they can teach us so much about community, about our health, their environmental indicators, their ancient creatures. And I think it's an important time. It's been 10 years since colony collapse disorder was first reported on. And there's still people today that don't know that honeybees pollinate one in three bites of the food that we eat. Yeah, actually that's a, that's a good segue. I, I wanna ask you to maybe step back a bit and, and place this in context because there's probably some portion of listeners who are like you know bees why, why the hell is this lady talking about bees yeah so bees why are bees so important why should i care about bees there's many pollinators and we should care about them all but selfishly the bees are honeybees european honeybees are the most valuable to us because they pollinate one in every three bites of the food we eat so they literally get provide you with food. They pollinate everything from avocados to zucchinis, billions of dollars in the United States. And what we do um, in our modern agriculture, which I think is the root of many of our issues, is that we take bees from monoculture to monoculture and they pollinate the food to give you blueberries, to give you cherries, to give you almonds. So they are very important. But now, 10 years later, it was last year was the 10 year anniversary, also coinciding with um, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. And she was very instrumental in creating the Environmental Protection Agency in the 70s. So here we are um, 50 years later where she was fighting for to ban DDT. These systemic pesticides that are the root of colony collapse disorder made by Bayer Syngenta are responsible for, like I said, the core of colony collapse disorder. Well, they're being compared to DDT, except they're, they're said to be five to 10,000 times more toxic. Now these chemicals, these systemic pesticides, it was sold as if they were gonna be safer because the organophosphates you spray on top but these chemicals are more insidious because they're entrenched in the seed in the soil or entrenched on the seed. So they become the poison becomes part of the plant. So the bees take, take the pollen and the nectar back to the hive and it affects the, the future generations. So I tell people that 10 years later, we're the bees. We're the ones who are being exposed to an increasingly toxic world if the bees are being affected and they pollinate well we eat this stuff so today it's not only impacting honeybees it's impacting all the pollinators bats bee um, other bees um, birds hummingbirds bats um, aquatic life it's messing up the coral reef it's in our water it's in our blood um, it, it's the most common a pesticide in the entire world, not to be confused with Monsanto's Roundup, which is the most popular herbicide. So I, I, you mentioned this in passing a little bit, but this kind of segues into an interest in Monsanto and, and various chemicals. And, and 
So we have this colony collapse disorder with the bees that are, it's, it's very damaging for the planet, for the ecosystem and for humans, um, obviously very damaging for bees. But um, then there was this whole colony collapse disorder publicity and a search for what's responsible for that. Now, I know that I, I watched quite a bit of videos on this five, 10 years ago, but what have been the biggest advancements in the last maybe five years uh, around our understanding of what causes colony collapse disorder? Well, my movie, Vanishing with the Bees, is all about that. And, and like I was saying, the core is systemic pesticides that are not organophosphates that become part of the plant and that also stay into the soil. So the soil is the planet's biome and we're effing up the biome because if these, these chemicals um, take 18 years to degrade and their metabolites are more dangerous than the parent compounds. And so, yes, you can attribute lack of diversity, um, the fact that there are monocultures, uh, the fact that there are viruses, but it's just like... I saw some stuff around viruses. I saw some stuff around like uh, theories around like uh, electromagnetic fields and EMFs and things like that. So you think it's mainly about the pesticides? Yeah, I know. After 800 peer-reviewed studies, when I started making the movie, there wasn't a lot of information. Um, there are many bee yards next to cell towers. I'm not downplaying EMFs. Bees communicate in a different frequency. It, it's, it's a perfect storm, right? We're living in a perfect storm. And once you take the deep dive down the rabbit hole and you look at things from a functional medicine point of view, you realize that all these variables affect one another, but at the core, something is rattling our immune system or the honeybee's immune system. So you would think that it's a virus, just like with an AIDS patient who succumbs to pneumonia, but it's their immune system. These viruses are millions of years old. Uh, we have been living with viruses forever, and we know how to fight viruses innately. They are in us. As you know, they coexist with other viruses oftentimes. And so, no, that's not what's taking the bees down. It's the fact that our immune system is rattled. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of where most of the science has coalesced on this, on the subject of chemicals. Uh, and so that segues kind of, I think, very naturally into an interest in, you know, these pesticides, chemicals, Monsanto, the companies that are producing these, these chemicals. So can you talk about how some of your, your interests started to shift towards that? And, and I know there was also a, a recent merger between Bayer and Monsanto. So, you know, I'll, I'll let you kind of play okay. with those topics, how, how you want to introduce well, them. Well, when I started, when we started uh, covering the bees and why it was very much a, a mystery. Uh, I think for George, he, he was attracted to the mystery aspect. And so we kind of went along not knowing even that, wow, bees are trucked on semis from state to state. And then found beekeepers because we, we traveled to France, to Italy, um, to Germany all over UK and when you find beekeepers in different parts of the world coming to the same conclusions, these are the guys that are in the fields. They, it's empirical evidence and for me it's, it, it serves as a lot. Again, there weren't all those studies. Uh, Bayer is the maker of systemic pesticides along with Syngenta and they still to this day deny the fact that it harms honeybees despite all the studies. Um, so as we started filming, it took five years to make this movie, just our eyes were opened. Um, so I, I was coming at it from a Canadian who had a rude awakening to Western medicine in this country of how we treat people and then coming at it of realizing, wow, our food supply is being poisoned and, you know, food is thy medicine and then wanting to empower people and thinking, you know, at first like, oh, I'll move on to another project as far as the bees go and they stuck, pun intended. 
and created Honey Colony, which is an online magazine and marketplace that kind of emulates the bees and like, we're gonna find the best sources of information, we're gonna find the best sources of solutions, and we're gonna empower you. So the, the tagline is where the hive decides what's healthy. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, we're drowning in misinformation. People don't know what to eat today. They don't necessarily see things from a functional medicine point of view. Someone was telling me the other day that they went to their doctor and their doctor, they had a few complaints and the doctor literally said, I only treat one body part at a time. Yeah, mofo, because you compartmentalize things. You don't see things in a holistic manner. You don't look for the root. Uh, it's so myopic when you find out that doctors get four hours of uh, nutrition um, schooling. It's, it's, uh, I mean, I was seeing a, a, a client the other day that had SIBO and her integrative medical doctor put her on a diet of grains, like oatmeal, barley. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm like, how's that working out for you? <laughs> no, she wasn't getting better. So I think there's a lot of disinformation and we really need to treat ourselves as the individual and eat for ourselves. But the common ground is eat clean. I'm not going to shame you for being a vegan if I eat meat that from happy animals. It depends what condition you're eating for and, and your who you are and your biome. And it's not one size fits all. So I, I want to dig into that a bit more. But but first, let's uh, let's dig into this merger of Bear and Monsanto. Oh, yes. And, and can you talk a bit about what that means and why those two companies have merged? Sure. Uh, I might bring up an article to refer to that I wrote in 2016. So the merger was first announced, talks of the merger, and um, why, why so. Now, it was predicted back then that Mons Monsanto, by analysts, by myself, by others, that Monsanto would shed its name so that future generations would never know because it's gained such you know everyone like i say everyone loves to hate monsanto and they have such a negative rap that uh, by joining forces they're really monopolizing the food um, supply uh, the production of conventional food and um, yeah years from now people the future generations will, will not know but monsanto has wreaked havoc that their history Bayer's history that that stems from Second World War of creating chemicals to kill people and we had all this kind of leftover chemicals and then we started to wage war against the bug. So this is like a 63 billion dollar merger and the ethics of it are definitely questionable. Their history is questionable but it's like I gave the example of like Blackwater changed its name and so I believe also the future is now, zombies are amongst us, and the critical thinking is an all-time low. I personally believe it's because of the food. <laughs> Sorry. So zombies are amongst us. You'll have to explain what you mean by that. I, I think that people are getting dumber by the day. I think that critical thinking is at an all-time low. I understand I'm making generalizations uh, that the food, the food that you eat, definitely my consciousness i've been on a spiritual path and 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 it's a journey but if i look at my consciousness since i've changed the foods that i eat um it, it's expanded and i think that people are not asking the right questions and that these chemicals have been shown to rob us of iq points so although it sounds cute to say you know people are getting dumber by the day um it's it's also <laughs> actual and we see it around us that people are not it's a divide and conquer kind of system and people are not asking the right questions and people are fueled by their emotions and there's just a lot of disinformation and, and you have to take things into your own hands. A lot of these systems today, back then when I was making the film, I was saying all these systems have to collapse because they're archaic and they're not working, whether it's the bank system, the school system, the health system, it, it, they're all broken do down and these are opportunities for a new way of being, a new paradigm. I hope that clarifies it. I do feel like there are zombies that are just checked out. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, I want to, so, uh, you know, I think this point of, of Monsanto shedding its name is, is an important point. And, and, you know, to be honest, I think any of us in their shoes probably would do exactly that. We, if, you know, there was all this negative press coming out around Monsanto, it, and you are a business that is trying to keep doing what you're doing, um, you know, and, and, if if you actually believe in what you're doing and think it's a good thing, or you're just interested in money, um, yeah. I don't know what the the leaders of Monsanto actually believe. But um, in that scenario, it's easy to see. Hey, let's let's get rid of our name and just kind of do this quietly, and then turn into Bayer, and nobody will notice, and then we can just carry on doing what we're doing, and Monsanto doesn't exist anymore. Hell yeah. Yeah. So um, I have a quote from the executive director of Center for Food Safety, a nonprofit that I've worked with over the years in support. Given the international rejection of GMOs and Monsanto's brand name being in shambles, it's not surprising that Bayer has decided to drop the name altogether. However, Bayer should assume that just by dropping a name, they have they have dropped the liability. The worldwide food and environmental movements know that Bayer is now the new Monsanto. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, you know, highly conscious people who are paying attention to this topic certainly will be aware of this and they won't miss a beat. But I think for the general public, uh, they're used to hearing things about Monsanto and now they're going to stop hearing things about Monsanto. And so there will be a bit of a gap. I think that this strategy will work uh, for, for Monsanto's or Bayer's. Uh, advantage to a large degree in terms of avoiding negative public perception. Um, so yeah, very interesting stuff. Um, so I want to jump back to diet because you you made some uh, remarks about nutrition. Uh, just out of curiosity, what kinds of diets do you generally recommend? And, and it sounds like you have different recommendations for different conditions. So can you give kind of a broad overview of what your preference are? preferences are just, just kind of out of my own curiosity here well for me i am adopting a kind of ketogenic diet and um certainly over the years have tried so so many so it's more a way of 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 life a lifestyle H however if i'm dealing with someone and trying to help them i i have a questionnaire so i kind of see what they're leaning towards like if they like fatty foods I do look at their blood type, even though I've had my vegan friends tell me that it's BS. Um, so it, I think we just kind of decide that diet is very individual. Also having studied blue zones and longevity last year and uh, contributed just very little to the nine part, oops, I just broke my glasses, to the nine part um, human longevity project. I don't know if you're familiar, Jason Prawls. CA. Yeah, I was actually one of the experts featured in that. Oh, okay, great. Um, so you you realize that the different blue zones eat uh, different differently, and it's it's again uh, according to your biome. So f for me, I really like um, well. One, we can decide that I believe uh, grains uh, or gluten, um, dairy, anything that's conventional raw would be different and then definitely sugar to, to kind of ixnay those if, if you have someone that's, that's rebuilding their, their gut. Um, there is, as you know, the, the thought that glyphosate is the real um, problem be, behind breads when you look at the ancient cultures and the fact that they did eat grain. But I, I would think that it's because it's highly hybridized and to me, the most important thing is eating clean, eating local, if, if you can, eating sparingly. So I'm not dissing, for instance, meat, but it has to come from happy animals and um, no antibiotics, no hormones. So uh, yeah, I'm of the belief that the food needs to be clean and local and, and it's not normal to ship things around. And having studied, you know, they put a lot of emphasis in, in in the, in the Human Longevity Project on the importance of the biome and the individuality of the biome. Yeah, very cool. So final topic that I have for you is CBD. 
which is, I know, one of your other big interests and passions. And uh, I also understand from, from skim reading your book prior to this interview that it was one of the things that uh, was, was a big part of your recovery from the autoimmune disease. So can you talk about your interest in that? And I know that you also sell CBD now. So talk a bit about how you got into the CBD world. So upon looking, because of Honey Colony, always looking for kind of cutting edge, simply transformative solutions. And then also, you know, everything that we offer, uh, I vet, I, I use. So was introduced to CBD and then learned that we have a cannabinoid system that regulates things like mood and, and, and homeostasis and that we are living in a, you know, we're unbalanced. So having experienced benefits from for myself specifically in the realm of sleep and then wanted to create a formula which i think is like no other because it incorporates chinese herbs and also looks at basically went to the to our master herbalist that i now work with eliza moriarty and and said that i want to address autoimmune uh, conditions i want to address biofilm and so we created this beautiful formula not knowing the hell that I, I would experience um, because I sell a formula that actually works. If I was selling a cheap CBD isolate, I would have no problems doing it on Amazon. And there are people who sell on that I know on PayPal. So in January 27, now imagine as a, an entrepreneur, you work your booty off. It's been six years. You have so much sacrifice that you put in and you're finally seeing the, the, the rewards of all your, your work. And so I, I referenced 2017 to the year of playing whack-a-mole. So imagine getting shut down by PayPal, then Square, then Stripe, then QuickBooks. So every time you shut down, you literally do not have a way to make money. Very threatening to your first chakra survival skills. So not only get shut down, then we found a, a high-risk uh, processor that ended up defrauding us. So we got robbed. And I was also found out that I was victim of identity theft because there was a company opened up in the UK. And then we lost so much revenue from being shut down that we looked for uh, capital. And the person who was my CFO at the time, who is no longer with us, uh, found high risk cash advance places that are crazy. So they were taking out $1,500 a day, five days a week from our account. Meanwhile, I have customers, sick customers, that waited, imagine, from July and got their medicine in January. And they did go and try, in some cases, other brands, only to say, didn't work, please, when can I get yours? So I think it's a real testament of my tenacity of the value that we're offering quality because cannabis is a bioaccumulator and there's a lot of people who are making a very cheap CBD isolate. So they literally use the cannabis plant to clean the soil in Chernobyl. That's, I mean, cannabis is a beautiful, amazing plant. So you do not, whether you're sick or not, want to take a formula. Also, there's a lot of brands out there. They're putting ah, CBD and gummy bears and CBD and kombucha. It, CBD will degrade 80 to 90 percent by the time it gets into your liver. So that's just all marketing BS, which is why we offer a liposomal. Unless you're taking it rectally or liposomal, it's not going to get to your bloodstream. So really, there are a lot of people who sell CBD, but I don't think they're connoisseurs or looking at the science and putting love into it. They just want to make money. Um, so despite the odds and despite being robbed and defrauded and banned, I mean, like, why would a two-year-old video that I did about our superior CBD be banned? I even asked a cannabis lawyer. No reason. Now, it just so happens that the main company that's bringing their fake CBD to market with FDA approval is called GW. They just happen to be partnered with Bayer. I just happen to share bud and bees in common with Bayer Crop Science. And so I cannot prove anything, but I can just say that I have a medicine that works and that it's been quite, quite the challenge. And I'm more galvanized than ever because I've been speaking to customers, wh whether they have a broken neck or they're a veteran with PTSD 
or insomnia. This helps across the board because we have CB1 and CB2, CB2, CB2 receptors all over the body. So I hope that answers. Yeah, it does. I, I want to clarify a few things. Yes, please. You mentioned fake CBD. First of all, what is fake CBD? Okay, so when I say fake CBD, um, Big Pharma loves single molecules. So they have synthesized a CBD. There's other ingredients that I don't know what, what it is. And so it's, it's, a, it's a faux fake. It's not like getting the plant. When it comes to cannabis, you have the entourage effect. There's all these terp terpenes and there's different cannabinoids. And of course they work together in synergy. I don't think that you can duplicate um, nature. So when you think that the fake CBD is about to become a schedule two, is a schedule two, but the real plant is a schedule one. What the F really? Mm. How is it that the real plant, and so on one hand, they have created it to be up there with no medicinal properties, up there with heroin. And on the other hand, the government has also patented CBD as a neuro, um, um, neuroprotective antioxidant plant. They, they obviously recognize <laughs> the benefits and this is going to be very lucrative. So you can get on the big pharma plan and spend like, 3k a month or you can buy a bottle of high-end um, CBD I mean ours costs less than a hundred what do you want so also you're seeing in the mainstream that they're disseminating information like stating that can um, CBD has only been proven to be effective on epilepsy no that's because the first medication that's coming to market is targeting epilepsy it, it, there's been a myriad of studies to show across the board, and I have the empirical evidence too, speaking to customers over the past six months. Yeah, I've certainly seen dozens of studies uh, on the subject for, for a wide range of, of different conditions. Uh, there's also so, something that more research is needed on, but there's some research on something called clin clinical endocannabinoid deficiency, which is linked with fibromyalgia and, and a number of other conditions, migraines and a few other things. Um, so just, just to clarify this point a little bit more, what you're calling fake CBD, is that, is that just the pure isolated CBD molecule that is identical to the CBD that is, that is from the plant, it's just synthesized in a lab, or is it chemically not identical? Uh, it, honestly, it, when, if you go to, to Epidolox, it, it says a purified cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. So it's very um, fuzzy. Whether it's actually CBD? Well, it's not actual CBD because they had to patent it. So they had to change. Like, we know that with Big Pharma, they take single molecules and synthesize them. Okay. The, the actual ratio or what, the, you know, I tried to find what other ingredients are in this formula. And we also have um, synthesized THC coming out on the market. So it's the same thing where that's not a schedule one, but the, but the real plant is. So yeah. just the, the, the hypocrisy. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was gonna say, I know that there, the pharmaceutical companies have been in the process of developing several pharmaceutical drugs that are similar to THC as well. Yes, but Cannabis is a weed. <laughs> uh, there's no uh, shortage of being able to grow it. And so why mess with a good thing? So you can make money because it's going to be super lucrative and they're comparing it to the NFL, you know, billions and billions by 20, 2020. And also it, it, it works. It, it helps. It's so beautiful to hear uh, customers that are finding relief after years, you know, even getting off of opiates and finding that they can get off or take a lesser amount by taking our formula. Yeah, so one more point I wanna clarify, which is uh, you also mentioned CBD isolate from other companies and kind of you're drawing a distinction between sort of, I think what you call cheap CBD isolate versus your product. So what exactly is that distinction? So there's a, a whole, whole spectrum. So using, like I had mentioned, more of the terpenes. Unfortunately, because of the 
regulations, we are forced to make ours from industrialized hemp with less than 0.3 THC. So when you have a whole spectrum, you allow for the entourage effect. Uh, from my research and speaking to our formulator, when you're doing, you're taking us isolate, it doesn't allow for the other ter terpenes. And, you know, I, I also found out that some of the merchant processors, they will institute regulations that are even stricter than the FDA. So for instance, I had one merchant processor that said, oh, I'll take your CBD if it has zero THC. So in asking our formulator, she said, well, that's likely an isolate. Most of the isolates, you know, it's easy to get them from China or India, which chances are they have um, heavy metals or pesticides. I believe that in this country, there is no regulation currently on if you're getting our, our CBD is from Germany, but I don't know what the regulations are set as far as spraying or chemicals. I think that marijuana is just starting the cannabis plant with four marijuana is just starting to have regulations when it comes to pesticide spray because you can go into a dispensary and I find it just oxymor just an oxymoron like oh is there, are, are you using chemicals on that I'd like some organic bud and they don't know why would you want to imbibe any chemicals if you're tr getting treated for for something even if you're healthy uh, chemical body burden is so underestimated, I, I, I believe. I think that we're increasingly, like I said, being exposed to, to chemicals. So one last distinction, which is on your, I looked at your website on the sales page, you have 10 times higher bioavailability compared to other THCs. And I know you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago that I think you said 70 or 80% of CBD that is right. normal CBD that's orally ingested doesn't make it to the bloodstream. So yours, you're saying has 10 times higher bioavailability. What, what is the reason for that? And um, is there evidence to support that claim? Well, I'm not an expert as far as liposomal, but it's encapsulated in a little, uh, like a bubble, so that it, if you're taking it underneath your tongue, like just like rectally like th then it will go straight into the bloodstream and people feel it right away so i don't know if that's a satisfactory response to you or what you yeah think. no i i mean i there's definitely some science around liposomal technologies i, I was just wanting you to explain yes. uh, to to the listeners what exactly is the reason that it's it's if your cbd is different than standard cbd that's non-liposomal Yes, there are other liposomal formulas out there, just like, for instance, Quicksilver has a lot of liposomal excellent products, whether it's glutathione or vitamin C or uh, theanine, and that it just is more effective because you, you actually are absorbing it and it gets into the bloodstream. And, and like I mentioned, everyone and their mama is making CBD now, and I don't believe from from uh, from a science point of view if you're putting cbd in kombucha or coffee that it's going to get to you mm. gotcha so um one last question which is what particular kinds of health issues have you found uh, in terms of the feedback you've gotten from customers have you found uh, people are getting the best results for or from the the cbd that uh, they're using from you well, we have a story on Honey Colony, a, a superior six stories of success across the board. So, like I said, I have a lot of people who are taking it for insomnia. I have a lot of people who are on, I wrote an article on, you know, I was microdosing on Xanax for a long time. I mean, the average Xanax is five milligrams. I was taking 0.25 <laughs> because I felt so much guilt, but it was, I needed to sleep for a long time and then accidentally um, was testing CBD, not, not our formula, and saw that in smaller quantities, CBD will be energizing, and in larger quantities, it will be more CBD. So I see a lot of results with, well, with our formula, we have things like teasel root, white peony, schizandra. So it's very good for com combating inflammation and biofilm. Uh, so I have seen people that have Lyme that are finding benefits from superior CBD. 
the oil. And like I said, I don't, I have not seen yet any other um, formula that incorporates Chinese medicine and is specific for autoimmune uh, sufferers having had an autoimmune condition myself. Great. So Miriam, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure to speak with you and, and this has been a fascinating interview. Uh, where can people go to find out more about what you do? Uh, I think it's honeycolony.com is, is your main site. And, and is that for CBD? Kind of explain your two sites. I, I think you have two websites, one's for lots of info and then one CBD specific. Is that correct? Yes. So the magazine and the marketplace is honeycolony.com where we offer other solutions like molecular hydrogen and silver. And then you can buzz on over to simplytransformative.com. And that has been created just for CBD due to the politics of things. So um, yeah, that's where you can find me. And, and thank you for, for this opportunity. I'm, I'm in gratitude. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. Take care, Mary. Thank you.